The message you're about to listen to is brought to you by the Enthronement House Christian Center, a church with the mandate to activate and actualize God's royalty in you. Fasten your seatbelt. Get ready for a ride as God's servant brings you the anointed word of God that will change your life forever. And now, the ministry of the senior pastor, Enthronement Assembly, Reverend Deji Olabode. So we've been speaking in our month of uncommon prosperity. God has wrapped up our prosperity in our seed. In Zechariah 8 verse 12, it tells us, For the seed shall be prosperous. So our prosperity is rooted in the kind of seeds that we're sowing. It says the seed shall be prosperous. A vine will give its fruit. The ground will give her increase. The heaven will give their due. And the Lord will cause the remnant of this people to possess all these things. It's saying in essence, not everybody will possess it. Those who possess it, he calls the remnant. This means every prophetic word will not be proved will not be uh, 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 actualized by everybody. He says there's always a remnant. There's always a remnant. What I want to do in the la la my last two sessions before the anointing service on Sunday is to share with you how you can be that remnant. I've been talking about this since, but I want to share a few things with you. Why is seed time harvest important? It says, in Genesis 8, it says, as long as this earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. It's both good news and bad news. Good news if you're sowing the right seeds. Bad news if you're sowing the wrong seeds. What do I do, therefore, if I've been sowing the wrong seeds? I need to make a decision to stop sowing that kind of seed. Because if you don't stop sowing it, you're going to get what is coming. And to begin to cry for mercy. Now, as we talk about this, it's important in your journey in Christ to always let the word interpret the word. These things we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but in the words which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things to spiritual. You can get on the scripture. So it's very dangerous. I've said this. Hardly do I use my dictionary in the comprehension of my Bible. What I do when come, I'm not saying it's wrong, but hardly do I use a secular dictionary for uh, my Bible. I seldom do that. What I try to do is to allow the Word of God interpret the Word of God. That way you're going to be accurate. Now, when he said, the seed shall be prosperous, I want to add another layer to this because Many times, people don't know what the seed is. They don't know what the seed is. Now, when he said, the seed shall be prosperous, he didn't just say, a seed shall be prosperous. He said here, the seed shall be prosperous. We must then find out what is D seed. In Luke chapter 8, verse 11, the Bible said, Now the parable is this D seed is the word of God. D seed is the word of God. It means, therefore, the word of God is the seed of all seeds. I was still listening to a man of God recently and he said something very powerful. That you know it's not enough for people to give if they will not listen to the word of God. I have warned my partners that they shouldn't just be throwing money at me. You, need, you will need to listen to me to maximize what you are giving to me. The same way you will need to listen to God to maximize what you are giving to God. 
It is not enough to make investments in God if you are not paying attention to him. Investments require attention. Please follow me. For instance, if you are an investor in the stock market, an investor in the stock market pays attention to the news of the stock market to know what is actually happening. It is only in the body of Christ where people give to a church, they give to a man of God, but they don't pay attention to that man of God or to that particular church. When you invest in something, you're paying attention to the news regarding that thing to know how the market is going. It is just wisdom. The same way when you begin to sow into a life of man of God and you begin to sow into a ministry, you have to begin to pay attention to the word of that ministry. I'm speaking to all of my partners here. If you have been giving, but you have not been listening, you have been missing out. It will take listening to the word in the direction of the one you're giving to, to maximize what you're giving. It's just a basic investment principle. Or else, how will you know what is going up? How will you know what is going down? How will you know how to take advantage of the fluctuations in the market? Remember I told you yesterday that there's something about frequency and resonance. If you can't pick my frequency, you're not likely to resonate. And I'm speaking here particularly to, well, <laughs> let me not go there. Most of you internationally. I bless God for the people God has given us in the nation right? who continue to retire their seeds to their Jerusalem church and their man of God. But I'm instructing them that to maximize all that they are being given, they need to create time to listen. Because the seed of all seeds is the word of God. It will take, therefore, in fact, the Bible says in Isaiah, cast your bread upon the waters. He says, after many days, you shall find it. Let me explain. There must be a word that you are sowing into. Cast your bread upon the waters. It is when you cast your bread upon the waters that you will find it after many days. What he's saying, therefore, is when you give, there should be a word basis for the seed you give. There should be a word basis for the offering you give. There are many people who give things, and when you take me back to the word that inspired this action, they can't do it, they can't do that. You're supposed to be casting your bread upon the waters. You're supposed to be casting your bread upon the anointing. You're supposed to cast your bread upon the word that is coming from the house that you belong to. It is why I am ahead of many people who claim to be following my man of God. Not because of anything, because they attend this church, they take listening to him for granted. I don't have that luxury. So I listen religiously to him. I listen consistently to him. And I listen preeminently to him. One of my secrets, I'm saying again, I listen religiously to him. I listen consistently to him. And I listen preeminently to him. If you are showing in the direction of the ministry you're not listening to, you're showing in the direction of the man of God you're not listening to, it explains to me why your seed has not been producing the kind of a harvest that is expected. Are you getting what I'm saying? The seed is the word of God. And if you are not going to cast your bread, you must be casting that bread on a particular word. There must be one thing you are trading. The seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. Now, every why should you begin to pay attention to the word of God? Because every other seed is corruptible. The only seed that is incorruptible is the word of God. First Peter chapter 1, verse 23 to verse 25, having been born again.
not of corruptible, but of incorruptible through the word of God that lives and abides forever. It means, therefore, that to have incorruptible harvest or incorruptible uh, outcomes, you have to be the kind of person who is sowing the seed of God's word. The word of God. Please follow me. I'm going to read this. The word of God. Unfortunately, many are doing business, they don't have time for the word. Many are doing career, they don't have time for the word. Many attend churches, they don't have time for the word. Many even serve in churches and don't have time. In fact, they like serving off-site. I want to ask that, please, for the sake of the destiny of who there should be a rotational process in place. Where if probably you serve off-site in the first service, you serve on-site. Because if you came to church and all you did was to serve and you never heard, you are cheating yourself. The Bible said concerning Mary and Martha, that Mary had chosen the good part, which had not been taken from her. We therefore, in all of our departments, that all of our ministers listen to me, all of our ministers listen to me, all of our heads of the listen to me, you have to organize the workers under your purview to serve interchangeably those who serve in the first service if if they couldn't hear the word in the first service they should serve in the, they should hear in the second service if they couldn't hear the word in the second service they, because they would all be wasting their energy everything is corruptible except the word of god the bible calls it the incorruptible seed the incorruptible seed the incorruptible seed. So therefore, when you want to begin in this equation, what prospers therefore is the word of God. Please, 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 please. It's not just what I gave that prosper. There is a word in me that is responsible for the prosperity of what I gave. So you may give what I give and not have the harvest I have because we don't have the same level of illumination because the word of God, for instance, is light. And you know, for instance, in sowing, that light photosynthesis has a huge the amount of light that your seed is exposed to, to a large extent, determines the quality of its growth. Sometimes you can have a seed, it's in a dark place, it won't grow like a seed that has access, are you there, to, to, to light. The word of God not only is light, the word of God also is spirit. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. What is spirit? Spirit is wind. Or Nuema, again, you know that in the absence of wind or air, there's a limitation to what the seed can perform. In the absence of light, which is also the word, there's a limit to what the, the seed can perform. In the absence of water, which is also the word, the physical five are two, there's a limit. So the word of God is light, the word of God is light, the word of God is water, the word of God is wind. All of that having an effect on whatever is planted. It therefore is the impact of the word on what you sow that makes it grow. It is the impact of the word of God on what you sow that makes it grow. It is the impact of the word of God on what you sow that makes it grow. I dare say you've been seeing a few blessings, but if you've not been paying attention to the word, I can tell that the growth is still nothing compared to what it could have been. That's why I don't joke with the word of God. Because the word of God that's the incorruptible seed is the word that inspires what we give. It is the word that waters what we give. It is the word that ventilates what we give. And it is the word that enlightens what we give. And therefore to be given without the word is to be cheating ourselves. I have a lot of sons who claim to be given to me and I have not seen them. One I called some of our pastors saying, I fought with them. I mean, I was fighting with them. You mean you'll be pastoring for us? You won't be listening to us? You have succeeded. <laughs> you have succeeded. You should have a fear of not hearing something that your man of God is teaching. I have a fear of not hearing. I live with the fear of not listening to something my man of God is saying or emphasizing because I'm sowing into that market. I must be sensitive to it. He had a workers meeting recently. I had it. One twenty-four, one one hundred twenty-four minutes, one hundred twenty-four minutes, two messages. I had it. Twenty-four hours after he preached it, I had it. That's why it's producing dangerously in my life. Dangerously in my life. 
Therefore, if you are struggling with seed sowing, it is probably because you are sowing seeds without this seed. This seed. This seed. And this seed. The incorruptible seed is the word of God. Businessmen, pay attention to the word of God. Pay attention to the word of God. Do you know to tell you that business is deep? Some of the greatest businesses are founded on what, guys? There's something out the Bible right now called uh, 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 the... My, my new Bible now is, uh, I think, the New American Standard Bible, 1995, from the Lockman Foundation. The Lockman Foundation, are you there, was an agricultural institution that devoted its income and its profits to the printing of Bibles. It's done that for many years, since 1950-something, for many years, bringing scholars together. Yeah. Listen to me, it is the word that prospers. It's not just what you sow that prospers. It is the word that prospers. So if you limit, therefore, your exposure to the word of God, you have limited the output, you have limited the results of the word of God. And then a lot of say things that, uh, you know, um, is that we are busy. Oh, you are busy. You have time for news. You don't have time for the word. Oh, you are very busy. <laughs> are you kidding it? The seed, the key to incorruptible outcomes is the word of God. 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 I love John 1. One, one in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The same was in the beginning of God. All things were made by him. Are you made through him? And without him was not anything. See, the word can make things. In that word was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in darkness, and darkness could not come. Now I was listening to a man of God recently, and he said something that I'd never listened, I'd, I'd never learned before. He said, you know, many times people give, but they don't have the word of God in them. So they come under attack. And because they now come under that attack, you know, they don't have the word of God in them. So, because once you're a giver, you know that you definitely are a helper of the assignment of God upon the earth. Now, you're a giver, but you now don't have the word of God in you as a base of faith to resist the challenges. That's how many people collapse. That's why it's not just about giving. You must have the word of God in you to resist whatever Satan is bringing against you. To resist because now, when he said the shield of it and taking the shield of it, by which you shall be able to quench all of the fear and doubt of the wicked. How does faith come? Faith come by the word of God. So limited what? Limited faith. Limited faith prevailing challenges. Because it's the word of God in you that will respond to the challenges. So it's not just throwing seeds at God. You must be paying attention to the word of God so that in you, when things come against you, there is not, you can't say, I, I mean, people have challenges, they say, but after all, I gave. It's not just that you gave. You need, you can't say, but after all, I gave. That's not the issue. You gave, yes, but you must have the word of God in you as a basis of faith to resist what the enemy is doing. Or else, you can do the right thing and come under attack. You can serve and come under attack. You can get married and come under attack. You can give. So we must therefore begin to pay attention. Every son and daughter of should live with the fear of not hearing what we are saying. <laughs> with the fear, not hearing it. And not, not just hearing it because the one thing is to hear and one is to get it. Because the person that will be telling you something, you've heard it, doesn't mean you have gotten it. Because if you have gotten it, it will begin to show. It will begin to show. So you are not only hearing, but you are hearing to get, so that you can get it. Because when you have, when you get it, there will be a reward, and your expectations shall not be cut short. So how then, ladies and gentlemen, I want to give you about six or seven things, seven recommendations, so that you can have <clears throat> Let me share some with you. My time is up. Of course, Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to verse 23, 22, it is one who hears my sayings and does them, that is building the house on the rock. The one who is not hearing is just on the sand. Do you see that scripture? And when you build on the rock, it can change. So I want to recommend a few things to you, and I'll be out of your face this morning. Are you there? A few things. If you're going to have incorruptible... No, 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 no. Please, let me say something here. You see, I don't like happenstance. Hey, somebody just gave me one million. I don't like that kind of testimony. I don't like that kind of testimony. You know why? If it just happens suddenly and there's nothing you did in the world to produce it, 
when you need it next time, you will not know what to do. Let me tell you what the word of God is. When you receive with meekness the implanted word of God, certain things will begin to grow. Now, I look at my hair, of course, there's no hair there, but you look at this hair, no matter how much you bab it, it will grow again. Because once a word takes root in you, that root will begin to bear fruit. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, when the things happening in your life is a function of the fruition of the seeds of the word of God planted in you, nothing on the outside can affect you. If the money you had came as a result of words planted in you, let all the money go. You will grow it again. If your results, your health, if those things came... Uh, see, no matter how much I bab this hair, I need to touch it every week because the root... That's why when revelation takes root, when revelation of the word takes root in you, you will be producing forever. It will... Because that thing planted in you is, a, is, a, is an incorruption that, that lives and abides forever. So, you want to make sure that... Watch this. They are not just... Let me know about these guys. Yeah, except they pay me. You want to be careful that the things you are manifesting are not things somebody places on you. They, it is things that you grow, you agree with. There was an implantation. So, for instance, if I place this thing on you now, I can just take it and you are back to zero. So you want to make sure that your finances, your business, your career, your promotion, your faith, your 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 favors is a function of revelations rooted incorruptible seeds in the word of God. So that if people take what is outside away, you will just grow it again. You grow it again. That's what we're doing. It's why our results are stable. Our breakthrough is stable. Have you ever seen us? We went up, we went down. No, 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 no. What you're seeing at the Entrumen Assembly in everything we're doing is the fruition of the incorruptible seed of the Word of God. It is only then that you are free when you are generating your results based on the revelation of the implanted incorruptible seed of God's Word. Your, everything happening in your marriage is growing from the Word. Your finance growing from the Word. Your health is growing from the Word. Your cars are growing from the Word. Your children are growing from the Word. Your relationships are growing from the Word. Your career is growing from the Word. So nothing happening on the outside can affect you because it came from the roots. I'll share that with you later in the day. Because many times, the reason why the only thing that external environments can affect are the things that didn't come from the roots. From the roots. If I have time, man, eh? if I have time, because I don't have time, I will take you to every single scripture that is the basis of everything happening in our church. I will take you to the scriptures for the finance. I will take you to the, every you hear me say, pin it. Everything I'll take you to where. If I have time, like nobody has time. Everything, nothing just happens. And that's why when people say things on the outside, they say, I just laugh at them. Some things that we grew by revelation, we didn't grow it by chance. All these things were grown by the incorruptible season. So when you begin to do things like that, you're a man of all seasons. And when the person says they are living, you just be laughing at them. <laughs> You'll be laughing. At, you'll be mocking them indirectly because you know what they are going to miss out on. Especially if, watch this, they are reacting to certain things via offense that you are operating by, by revelation. You'll be laughing. This is the frequency of incorruptible outcomes. So I want to recommend a few things. Number one, are you ready for this? For you to generate incorruptible outcomes, number one, I recommend Bible reading. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 14 to verse 20. It speaks about the protocol of royalty. Deuteronomy 17, verse 14 to verse 20. I will pick it from around verse 18. Also, it shall be that when the king sits on the throne of his kingdom, he will write for himself a copy 
of this book of the law from the one before the priests, the Levites, and it shall be with him, and he will read it all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear his God, and be careful to observe the words of the Lord. So you are to be reading the Bible daily. He will read in it all the days of his life that he may learn to fear the Lord. Bible reading. Bible reading. Bible reading. Matthew 21, 16. Matthew 21, 16. Matthew 21, 42. Matthew, Mark 2. 25 to 27. Mark 2, 25. Simple statement. Have you never read? Which means, see, God will not tell you everything. If you don't read, there are some things you won't know. Have you never read? Paul said to Timothy, till I come, give attendance to reading, the public reading of scripture and the private. Bible reading. Bible reading. <laughs> Everybody here should go and get a Bible reading plan. Because your Bible reading is the first base, right? It's the first base of your revelation, your Bible reading. I told all the upcoming ministers in our church, I told them, if you don't read your Bible, you will not succeed. It's not that uh, you are saying story. <laughs> are you there? It is the governing constitution of this thing. And it's only for pastors. This was government. It was only political leaders. That you should read from this thing all the days. The Muslims have done a better job at this than us. I must confess. I must confess. When we talk about scriptural ignorance, the scriptural illiteracy amongst Christians is way higher than amongst Muslims. I won't go into details. Bible reading. To develop to have incorruptible outcomes, subscribe to Bible reading. Number two, subscribe to Bible study. Bible study. In Acts chapter 17, verse 11 to verse 12, it says, These believers at, uh, at, at Berea were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, they received what and such the scripture daily whether those things were so he called he said they were he's called Berean nobility they they were more noble so certain churches are more noble than other churches because of their study of scripture i call this scriptural aristocracy scriptural aristocracy so they search the scripture. See, don't take my word for it. Check the word of God for it. Don't take my word for it. Check the word. The reason why people have been deceived, they say, one pastor said, one pastor said, when you did, didn't you have the Bible? They search the scriptures daily. They receive the word of God, but then they search, which means every time a scripture is going you should be writing it so that you can check up what the word of God is saying. You're checking it because anybody can say what they like, but if, if it's not in a book, I don't know where I was listening to that recently. He said, Higgin asked somebody recently. Higgin was asking somebody. He said, that thing you are saying, is it in the book? The pastor said, I've gone beyond that book. <laughs> Bible reading. Two, Bible study. Now, in study, you now go deeper, you know? You go deeper. You could decide you are studying a Bible character. You could decide you are studying a Bible topic. You could say, I'm studying marriage. I'm studying business. I'm studying money. I'm studying gold. I'm studying... And then it is in those things that your certain gems will begin to come out to you. This month, for instance, let me explain. Beyond what we are teaching, whenever we mention the word for the month, you should... Begin your own study on it because there may be things God wants to say to you that I'm not saying to you. So I am studying, for instance, seed this month, an exhaustive study of seed. You should also be on that exhaustive study of seeds. Three, I recommend Bible listening. Bible listening. R Romans chapter 10, verse 12. In this regard, listen to approved 
teachers of the word of God. And also sometimes you can also listen to audio versions of the word of God. Ezekiel 2, 2, his spirit entered into me when he spoke unto me and he said, upon my feet. You listen. The one you listen to is the spirit of the person you carry. Let me not go into details. Anybody who is not listening to yours in this church and is but you just do them, you know, because Ezekiel 2, 2 says, he entered into me. His spirit entered into me when he spoke unto me and he said, upon my feet. So, the same way, listening to the word of man, let me tell you something here. That doesn't mean I don't listen to anybody anyhow. Telling you the truth. I must make sure I am sure of your kind of spirit before I give you my ears. Because people use their words to transfer their spirits. The same way right spirits are transferred by right words, wrong spirits are transferred by wrong words. I'm very selective. He is very expensive. Well, listen to. Listen to approved waters. It is the responsibility of the shepherd of a church to guide you into living waters. Listen to approved waters. Bimnia Boda approved waters. Kore Deko Maya approved waters. David Deko approved waters. Pastor A. Adeboe approved waters. W.F. Kumui approved waters. I listen to approved waters. Let me leave that alone. Anybody who's not heard those quotes, you're on your own. Listen, Bible listening, Bible reading, Bible study. Number four, Bible thinking and meditation. Now, this is where people also have issues. You see, the Word of God is supposed to form how you think. It, 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 in Romans 12, 1, 2, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and do not conform to what God be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is a good acceptable power. See, if the mind you had when you came to Christ is still the mind you have right now, I can tell you why there's no results. Because as you're, you're supposed to be changing your mind as God is upgrading your revelation. Now, also, it, so here I'm talking about Bible thinking and Bible meditation. Bible thinking. Allowing your mind to be determined. See, anything that is put in your mind that is not lining up with the Word of God should be cast down. You should let the Bible determine your, your mentality. You see, it's called a biblical worldview. You there and the homosexual. No. By bleak our worldview means what the Bible says is right is right. What the Bible says is wrong is wrong. It's not if I think. There's nothing you are thinking. The Bible gives you what to think. He says think on these things. The Bible gives you what to think. And you cannot get Bible dimension of results if you are not thinking Bible thoughts. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. Are you after five or ten? Are you there? As my ways are higher than yours, so my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. But he now went down and said, as rain. Then he's not talking about his word. God's word are God's thoughts. So we should empty ourselves of our secular and then allow the word of God enter our mind. Bible thinking. And the best way to do that is by meditation. And let me explain a secret to you. The Bible did not attach success in scripture to reading. The Bible attached success in scripture to meditation. Joshua 1 8. This book of laws is not the part of your mouth, but you meditate there in day and night. Then you observe to do according to all that is in there. And then you have your way. You make your prosperous and you have good success. So the Bible attaches success to meditation. In second First Timothy 4 15, meditate on these things, give yourself wholly to them that your prophecy may appear to all. The Bible attaches success to meditation. Psalms 1 1 to verse 3. In the law, he meditates day and night, he shall be like a tree. These things are real. You, know? you see, what I'm praying for people is that may your eyes be open as we are talking. May your eyes be open. May your eyes be open. May you not discover too late that what we're saying is the right thing. So it is looking at this and saying, I esteem your word. The Bible says, I esteem your precepts concerning all things to be right. So, Bible meditation means you begin to grow in your thinking. What, what thoughts? I recommend number five, Bible speaking. Bible speaking. 
in dealing with Bible speaking, I, Bible speaking, of course, you have seen Acts chapter 14, verse 3. You have seen Psalms 103, verse 20. So, now, the Bible was written, the Bible was spoken before it was written, but it was written so that it should be spoken. So, I recommend again, the speaking of the Word of God. Speaking the Word of God. It's called confession. I'll go into some of this later. Bible speaking. And you should use the Bible also to check your confessions. When a person say, you should have people in your space that check your confession. When you say something, there should be people who say that which scripture should be fulfilled. Because everything you're doing, should be, it should be a scripture to be fulfilled. You're not just talking anyhow. You're not just releasing idle words. A lot of people want the kind of results that we have, but they don't see the discipline in our words. That we talk word. We, we talk word. And we don't talk ninja. And ninja don't scatter. <laughs> Don't be distracted. Okay? Ninja is okay. If you're operating by the right principles. Bible speaking. Number five, I recommend Bible behaving or Bible conduct. Leviticus 18.5, Nehemiah 9.29, John 13.17. Let me use that. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. I recommend Bible behaving or Bible doing, Bible behaving. Number six, because a lot of people just look at Bible, they say Bible apart. You can never see the results of the word if you undermine the word. There are people you look at and you understand scripture. This guy is living the word of God. And there's a way God honors the people who live the word. Six, Bible praying. First John 5 and verse 14 to verse 15. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if he hears, we hears us, we know that we have those things that we've got. So God, God's word and God's will is God's hearing aid. So when you're praying, you're not just praying sentiment, maga, yoga, moga, yaga. You are praying based on the word of God. That's, a, that's New Testament praying, not sentimental praying. That's New Testament praying. You pray the word of God. John 15, 7. If you abide in me, I'm my words abide in you. You will ask what you will, when it shall be done unto you. So I recommend Bible word. Bible praying. Eight or seven, I recommend Bible preaching. Bible preaching. I was sharing with a young man in his church recently and I said to him, as my time is fast spent, a lot of people want Bible results, but they don't speak the word of God. They don't preach the word of God. They went everywhere and preached. God was confirming his word. If I said to you, I'm going to give you a million, right? I didn't say to you I was going to give you a million. And you expect a million. I'm not going to give you that million. That's the same way. You can't expect God to be committed to your ideas, to your thoughts. If what you're saying is not backed up with what he said, you won't see God. He will be far from that place. He will be far from that place. You think we are foolish that we're basing everything we do here on the word of God. Once we get off the greed of the world, we have gotten off the greed of divine confirmation. I recommend Bible preaching, not storytelling. Bible preaching. Lastly, is Bible praising. Bible praising. Psalms 56 and verse 4. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I will praise his word. Psalms 56. In God, I will praise his word. Psalms 56 and 10. In God, I will praise his word. Bible praising. Now, I'm saying in essence, my time is up this morning, that the key to incorruptible outcomes is basing everything on the word of God. You are planting it. You are sowing it. The material seed you sow is a function of the things revealed to you in the word of God. You can take us to the place where that behavior originated from. You can take us to the scripture you are operating. Now, when you stay on that frequency, I guarantee you, your outcomes will be incorruptible. I pray for you this morning. My time is all. My God will give you an appetite for his word. In the name of the Lord Jesus. May my God bless you with the same frequency. Hunger in my spirit for the word of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Listen to me. Word results are different. There are some things we are doing now. My wife, I said to honey, do you, we, we write books. Are we living on the books? Is that? Uh, be careful about people's ideas. 
Be careful. Bible results are different. Bible results are different. When you're getting word results, it's not this mental thing you're doing. Bible results are different. You will see it. And as for me and my house, I've chosen to stay on the frequency of the word of God. You know, when the word of God operates, there's an, you see the supernatural. You see that this one is not hand. This is not, this is not manipulation or anything. God is just doing... That's, just, that's what we're eating at the Entrumble Assembly. Our results are purely generated by the word of God. And you know what? Those doing it by the word and doing this by the word can have the same. At some point, the world will be new, limited. So if you are not doing it by the word, you have to be limited, either financially or health. Imagine if you have a problem that doctors cannot solve. Will you now live your life in the hands of doctors? I said, we all must stay on the world frequency because no word from God, Luke 1 at 7, shall be void of power. I lay hands on you this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus. Grace to sow the word. Grace to plant the word. Grace to begin to trade the word. Let that grace rest upon you now in the name of the Lord Jesus. So when he said, the seed shall be prosperous. The seed of all seeds is the word of God. And I pray that from today, you will begin to walk on that frequency. In Jesus' mighty name.